Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, we're gonna talk about pruning to keep a plant kind of looking natural uh, rather than you know, pruning it back into a little ball or little formal hedges, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, I kind of like you know, the shrubs to look the way they're kind of supposed to look, but we do need to keep a little bit of control over them. This is kind of a small lot here in Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, zone 7B, and you know, we can't let the shrubs get but so big, but I don't want to, again, I don't want them to look like little meatballs. This Florida Sunshine Elysium, uh, it's in a perfect spot here. It's really, really happy in part sun. Sun's about to be up on it now in the morning and it'll get about four or five hours of direct sun. It's just been the perfect spot for it. It's in the shade by the afternoon because some of these gold foliage plants can burn uh, in the direct sun. But it's almost in a little bit too much shade so you can see it's stretching a bit on us, right? It's trying to, re this, you know, this branch right here specifically is really reaching for the light. I'd really like to just slow this thing down a little bit and let this fuller bottom growth catch up with it. Uh, when I take, you know, when I take a branch off like this, if I just cut it to the exact height, you know, that these are, it's going to branch out from that and it's going to race ahead again. And so when I have a branch that's sticking up like this, I'll generally just follow it down into the plant and take it completely off. And so. These other branches, I'm probably gonna leave them in place, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tip prune them, meaning I'm gonna take about an inch off the end of each of these branches, kind of just to slow them down uh, and wait for the rest of this plant to catch up. If I had any branches that are sliding out a little further in width than I want, I'd take those back into the plant a bit as well, but that's the way I'm going to approach this. So I put the pruning shears away, the head shears. You know, I'm not gonna use head shears on this type of pruning. I'm gonna use hand pruners, small little shears. Maybe if I had a bigger limb uh, down in the bottom, um, I'll use something heavier than that. But again, putting away the head shears for this type of pruning. So I, I'm just gonna take, I'm following this branch all the way down to the bottom. You're, you're in full control of these plants, believe it or not. I can, not, not only can I, um, uh, so let's, let's do a different type of, let's say I was gonna do a different type of pruning. So you see where the, there are there are buds a dormant there are dormant buds along this stem right here okay if I cut just above this one this one is facing toward this direction this piece is going to come out like this I have that kind of control of this plant if I cut it to the next one the growth that's going to come out from that top bud is going to go back toward the middle and I wouldn't want it to go back toward the middle so if I was just going to cut this one down like that uh, I, I have that kind of subtle control that I can figure out where that next branch is gonna come from. In this case, I'm just gonna take this one all the way down into the plant and it's gone. Um, and it, what, it's not cruel, <laughs> everything's fine. Uh, then I'm gonna just kind of hold these together. I'm not really gonna be all that precise about this. Uh, I'm not worried about the wounds that I'm creating. This is a native to the Southeast plant. I'm just gonna slow this growth down and let the rest of this catch up. If you're following along with the channel this year, you'll see how this area right here will now, you know, hopefully catch up and fill in. Uh, and if it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I'll come back and, you know, if I get another stretched out piece, cut it back as well. So I showed holding this together and just taking it off, wounding the leaves. This isn't gonna be the best look until the new growth, you know, comes out on it. And these leaves that I've cut will probably end up with a little bit of burn on them. You can avoid that. Um, if you want to get in here and you've got time, you know, you can just cut down, you know, just above uh, a leaf on the stem uh, so that you're leaving, you know, whole leaves in place, just like that. And so it will ultimately look a little better, you know, for the next few weeks. Um, new growth is going to come on it and cover it up pretty quick anyway. Uh, so it probably, here's one I absolutely just missed. Uh, but, I, you know, now I've cut it above a full leaf uh, like that, and it probably ultimately you know looks a little better for the next few weeks again if you have a wide you know you know this one's just heading off into another direction here's a here's a great example of a cut here's you know a branch is laying over here if i follow you know this down to where um, there's a little division in it a uh, little side branching going on right there if i cut this right at that side branch you literally can't even see that i pruned that you see this? I pruned it right there. Uh, you know, I pruned this branch off. Now it's raised up a bit because I took some weight off of it. But uh, 
you literally can't even see where I pruned it. You know, if you'll follow a branch down into the plant and uh, cut it at a place where it's, um, where it's got side branching. This is a Radiance Abelia. This is a great little low mounding evergreen. It can be kept about two feet in height. It'll get three to four feet in height if you let it, but it can be kept two feet in height, three feet in width. You'll tr it'll try to get some vertical growth on it like this occasionally. And I don't want to turn it into a really, really tight little meatball. It grows pretty formal on its own uh, without me doing that. I could shear this plant back. Um, a billiard just tough as nails. Literally could probably cut this plant down to six inches tall here. Um, beginning of February is when we're filming this, toward the beginning of March. I literally could cut this thing to the ground. What I like to do on these abelia though is just take these vertical pieces uh, and trace them down into the plant. And so I'll go way down in there. I'll just follow this as far down as I can. What happens is, I just wanna point, I wanna point out, if I just cut this even, if I take a pair of hedge trimmers and I cut this even, this more vigorous, heavier wood that's sticking up above the plant will grow faster than the rest of the plant. Therefore, I'm gonna to have to prune it almost immediately again. So, you know, by the time it starts growing by June or July, this exact look is gonna happen. So, what if, but if I go back and trace these heavy stems way down in the plant, as far down as I can reach without, you know, um, going all the way, I don't need to go all the way down to the ground, but I'll go down there and get that piece out, right? And then I'll go down, same thing with the one that's next to it. Okay, all of these, they have a certain look to them. They're easy to pick out. Okay, but you see that right there? Um, I immediately uh, changed the look of this. There's about, there's two or three more here that are like that. Um, actually, there was just that one. Um, outside of that, I don't know that I, I need to do anything on this. If I wanted to now go through and give it a little bit of a general shear with the head shears, just to make sure it's gonna be you know, thick and full. I don't really need, think I need to do that. Um, but if I did, I could do that right now. But I would encourage you before you do that to take these pieces out that have come up from the bottom and are just clearly visibly heavier wood. Um, if you do what I just did, that'll prevent it from immediately popping back up. But I think that just looks so much better just by taking out, literally, literally I made four cuts on that plant and look how much better it looked. We put these Leanne Clara in this front garden bed knowing that they were always gonna try to get taller than we wanted to uh, keep them. This plant has beautiful new foliage on it uh, anytime it's actively growing. So I'm doing this video in February. Typically I'd prune these more toward March, but we do these video content so that we can show people you know, in advance of, that, of, of the time to actually do it. New growth will start on it mid-April, May, June, July, really, great reddish maroon uh, new growth on it. So what I want to do is prune these down, but make it look like I didn't necessarily prune them down. And then they just come back up to this height over the course of the summer. Next winter, we'll do the exact same, exact same thing. So I've got this area down here in the lower part of this plant that's very full, very thick, very lush. The pieces that are up above it up here are what I want to take back. So if I just take them back to the exact height of the shrub, these heavier wood pieces will grow faster. Same thing as I just said on that abelia. And what will happen is these, these will just race ahead again and the lower part of the plant won't necessarily uh, catch up with it or stay full. So I just follow these, you know, this, this taller piece, I just follow it much, much lower down into the plant to where it's branching uh, right there. And, you know, okay, I hope you can see that. That I can follow that branch down here just to where it's branching and cut it just above that as an example of how to do that. But look, I cut it out and all of this is still here. Uh, you can't tell that that piece was ever, was ever there, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing. There's another vertical, vertical piece right there. I'm just going lower into the plant and cutting it. And again, I took that out and in fact, foliage kind of sprung up around it by taking some of the weight off right there. So here's another vertical branch. I'm gonna go way down in the plant, prune that thing out, and bam, could you even tell it was ever there? Okay, here's one that's just up just a bit. I'm gonna take it out. This one's up just a hair high. I'm gonna come take this one way down low in the plant, just like that again. Was it ever there? Don't know. Um, <laughs> 
hard to say. Uh, taking that one out, I'm going to go pretty low with that one, pretty low with that one just to where it's branching. Same thing, same thing, just way down in the plant just to where there's a branch down below it. Did you see how this is coming together? How I've taken this, all this vertical piece off? Does it even look like I've pruned it? Uh, that's pretty awesome. Just by taking a bit of time. And if I wasn't talking, I would be, I've, I can fly through this pretty quick. Again, I wanna go low enough. I didn't cut that one quite low enough initially. Just going down to where there's a branch at about the same level that I wanna keep the plant. You see this coming together? It doesn't look like it's been pruned at all. And again, by cutting this heavier wood down, it's gonna take it a little longer to catch back up. It won't just immediately need to be pruned again a month after it starts growing. Okay. If it's getting a little wider than you want it, you can do a little bit of that control at the same time. So as I go around here, it's into the back of this nightlight uh, camiociparis, and I don't want them to really be, you know, right up in one another. Again, same thing back here, just taking off a little bit of that width that's in it. And it's right up here in the back of this abelia, so we'll trim those off a bit. But look at this, you know, how this went. Uh, can you really tell? that I did any pruning on that shrub whatsoever. I got four more here to do. And when I'm done, they'll all look like that, like they're unpruned, really. Clayera will grow much faster than the abelia once they get going and you'll have that reddish burgundy hue behind that gold foliage on the abelia and again you look at those and you really can't tell that I did any pruning on them they kind of look like they did when they first went into the ground just a slightly larger version of that there's no leaves that are damaged on them from my pruning cuts and uh, again they just look look great right there it doesn't look like they were pruned at all this is a marvel mahonia and when it was first planted it only had one main central leader last year, had one cluster of flowers. I pruned it basically in half to get some additional branching on it. And now this year it had one, two, three, four, maybe five uh, flower clusters up on it. And I want to continue to make it broader. Uh, you can actually take these Mahonia basically to the ground. And if you have a really old one, you can just take like a third of the main branches on it and you can just cut those to the ground uh, a lot of different ways you can prune these but they can be you can do rejuvenation pruning basically on an older one cut it to the ground completely or just take the oldest again take the oldest canes to the ground or you can come in here and selectively uh, do some pruning on it this is kind of heavier wood this foliage is just kind of flat layered you know it comes out very horizontal like this and so if i just take any of these down to one of those horizontal layers uh it will appear as if you know i haven't cut it at all so i'm just going to take that one you know right off the top again i'm using a much heavier uh, pruner here but you can't see that i actually took anything off because i cut it right above an area where there's lots of foliage uh, coming out on it again sometime in the future i'll probably take it to the ground uh, but this this year but i'll take this this one right here you see this just one trunk coming up and there's a there's there's the flower head and then there's there's a, there's a gap in the stem and then there's some flat foliage down below that. And so if I just come in to one of these, you can't make a mistake here. If I need to cut it lower, I'll cut it lower. Um, but I'll start by you know, pruning it high right there. So by the time any new growth starts on this, it'll cover that right up. Uh, last year, you can see where I cut it. Uh, I cut it right at this height, right there. You can actually see where it was cut last year and then it branched uh, into those two. I'm gonna take that down even lower than I did last year, right there, and let some light, let some light down in this thing. Okay, didn't wanna come out of there. 
Uh, and you can see all the branching that took place last year from that cut. Uh, I'm gonna take this one off. Again, I'm just cutting these right above a little bit of foliage, so it's harder to tell that I've done it. And this one, same exact thing. Okay, just like that. I'm gonna take this one down just a hair lower now that I'm looking at it. Okay, and I got one right there. It's the same thing. Okay, so there you go. This one, I'm not able to really keep it as natural looking just because of the, the thickness of these stems, but by cutting it down to just where I have that flat leaf surface, very quickly, um, it'll look natural again as it's coming back out and each of these cuts will give me multiple new stems. Each one of those new stems will terminate in flowers uh, next fall and winter. So I think you can see from back there that it just looks like a low little evergreen uh, shrub and again it's going to hopefully branch out give us some additional flowers this year and I don't want it to get taller than this and so it it seems to want to grow about three feet in order to bloom that's one of the things I'm looking for when I'm doing pruning is I want it to kind of recover to the height that I actually want to maintain it if I'm only cutting it to the height I want to maintain it then I'm constantly in a battle against it um, having to prune it more frequently if that makes any sense. If I cut it to six feet, as soon as it grows, it's now taller than I want it. So I'm gonna cut it down to three and it'll recover to six during the growing season and I don't have to prune it again and I get my flowers and all that. So um, here's an October Magic Ruby uh, Camellia. This one is a very low compact uh, growing Camellia Sasanqua, bloomed in the fall. So we prune these, you know, pretty much late winter, early spring. They put on new growth. They set their flower buds during the uh, uh, early summer to midsummer, and then bloom again uh, in the fall. So we really don't wanna be doing any pruning on these other than late winter, early spring, maybe till about, you probably have a window to about June 1st uh, where you would still get, still get flowers on them. Again, this one has more of a low spreading habit, but just like anything else, if you put it in a hair too much shade, you know, it wants to kind of stretch on me. These are part shade plants. I'm probably a little beyond part shade uh, back this far back uh, in, the, uh, in the lot here. This one, um, again, so I'm, I'm looking at just vertical growth that's sticking up above everything else. I don't want to take this kind of bird's nest shape away from it that it has, because this is the way it kind of naturally grows, presents the flowers really, really nicely in the fall. So I want to take this out Again, this wood on these kind of pieces that come pop up is heavier than the wood on the other on this piece over here. And I'm going to tell you, if I only cut this to the height of the plant, it's going to grow faster than the rest of the uh, than the rest of the plant. So I'm going to take this thing. Uh, it's basically one big piece that has jumped out ahead of everything else uh, in this plant, and I want to trace it pretty far down. You can see where I've done it once before. And I only cut it to the height uh, and, and immediately pop back up. So this time, I really want to get down in there a little bit further. I'm going to have to get my uh, a heavier set of pruners real quick. Again, so I'm just tracing that down, way down into the plant. And I'm going to take it out just like that. There's one of them, right? And then there's one additional piece that's sticking up. I'm going to cut it just above a branch, uh, just like that. And then I've got a bunch of leaves and stuff down in here. And I've kind of recreated that bird's nest look. What I know about those pieces that I just cut off, they're gonna grow faster than every, everything else. And it's gonna fill in really quickly. What I, the rest of what I wanna do uh, on this plant is, uh, well, there's actually one more that's sticking up pretty high. I'll take it off, okay? And another one, um, I'm almost making the decision to take this piece off right here because it's up above, it was part of that branch, um, but I feel like it's gonna be too, too major of a surgery. So um, I'm just gonna take these back a bit. And again, I'm taking them back to where it branches. So if stuff gets in here real close, when I cut this back, I'm just gonna cut it. You see right here? I'm just gonna cut it back to where it branches. Um, this pair of pruners isn't quite heavy enough, but right there. And then when it lays back down, you can't tell that I pruned it at all. So same thing on this one. I'm just cutting, cut it back to a spot where it's branching. When I take it out, you can't tell. Uh, got another one that's sticking out into the path and it branches, 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 branches. I'll just go back to, to one 
and cut it out like that. And you can't tell, again, you can't tell that, I'm, that I've pruned it. Uh, any place I think it's gonna get wider and get into another plant, I'll just go along that branch, you know, until, you know, I've got all these side branches on it. If I just cut it back to one of them, just like that, again, you can't tell that I pruned it. Uh, stand back any distance from it, and you will not know that it's been pruned. So I'm controlling a bit of size in it uh, and keeping it its natural shape. I don't want to. I don't just don't want to cut it into a little meatball. Um, but I think that's all. That's all I'll do on it. But any cut that I'm making right now, I'm just searching along that branch to where it, it branches off, cutting it just above that. And there you go. Has that perfect little bird's nest. Uh, shape that I want to keep it in. It'll have tons of flowers on it this next fall. It'll be about this high uh, We'll fertilize it here in a few weeks um, as we get closer to March and that's it But that's how I kind of pr look um, Prune things to keep them in their kind of natural shape Some things out here that are just naturally low and moundy without doing anything to them other things. I want to keep You know looking a little bit low and moundy, but not really, you know, just like not like a boxwood uh, necessarily and so just with selective pruning, uh, all this material that comes off of here, uh, if it's heavy like this, we'll run it through a chipper and use it for mulch, or it can go on the compost pile if you want to. If it's small material like this and it's disease free, uh, we'll just take, we can cut these little pieces up and just mulch the plant with them uh, right in place. So chop and drop is what that's called. You chop it off the plant, you drop it where it is, and it becomes, uh, it basically feeds the plant from its own material from the previous year. So. Thank you guys for, very much for following along uh, with the channel. Uh, there's some, a lot more pruning to be done out here in the landscape over the next month or so. So um, please subscribe to the channel for more of it.